Anna with Brown Dog Craft Company. Today is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, and I'm coming to you live from Hudson, Wisconsin. So as you're joining in the chat, say hello and where you're joining from. I'd love to hear where you're coming from um, all over the country or maybe all over the world. Who knows? <laughs> um, today we are here for the Let's Craft card class. So that is usually the second Tuesday of every month. We make three cards using three different Stampin' Up! stamp sets. So I will show you what those cards are and we'll get going with class soon, but I wanted to talk about a couple things first. Um, let me pull up my comments here. And hello, hi Christina, welcome. So um, I generally teach class every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central right here on YouTube. The class is always free to watch and you can always purchase card kits to craft along with me, either live or on replay. So um, tonight's card kits are $22 and you'll get everything you need to make all three cards except for the stamps and the dies. So um, I'll show you some other stamps and dies that you could use in your stash if you don't have the ones that we're using in class tonight. Hi Sharon, welcome. So um, I'm sure we all have something in our supply of um, abundant stamps that we can <laughs> make do with something that we have. So uh, last week was Jungle Pals, which was super cute. So Jungle Pals was the celebration stamp and die bundle that was available earlier, like January, February. So uh, I do still have two card kits for that left. That was the bundle class, so that makes four cards, and those are $25 each. So if you want that, the best way to get a, a hold of me and order a kit is to reach out to me via email. So it's browndogcraftcompany.com is my website, and my email is hello at browndogcraftcompany.com. So that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. And if you want to download my class schedule, my class schedule is out there and published through August. And you can download a copy of that on your computer or print it. Hi, Marsha. Um, or print it and keep it handy. Um, and then you can sign up for any class that's on that list um, on the class schedule so far. So, um, Trish says, hi Jenna and friends. I used to be listed as user random threads, but now I have changed it to my real name <laughs> from Charlotte, North Carolina, where it was hot yesterday for partial eclipse box watching. Okay, yes, we have to talk about the eclipse. Okay, so first of all, let me say thank you, Trish, because I try to remember who everyone is. And sometimes that's really hard to do when your YouTube username isn't your actual name. So Sometimes I do a really good job at remembering who everyone is and sometimes I don't. So <laughs> thank you for changing your name. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay. So I think Charlotte, I know, I know most of Texas and Charlotte and some other places um, had really good views for the eclipse yesterday. We did not. It was super, super cloudy all day and uh, like the kids didn't have recess at school and they had like 3D glasses, you know, they were all supposed to go out and have a fun little viewing party and they didn't get to do that. So they were very bummed out and I was very bummed out because how often do we get an eclipse like this, right? So I think now the next one isn't for like 20 years, right? That's what um, someone was saying because the kids were calculating like how old they're gonna be the next time there's a solar eclipse or whatnot. So <laughs> it was pretty cute. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I will flip the camera. We're going to have class this Friday. So in just three days, we're going to have the In Color Retirement Party. So that's going to be featuring the five um, retiring in colors. And I'll show you those cards in just a minute. Let, I don't even have my camera on. One moment, please. <laughs> All right. Okay, and then... Um, uh, let me stick me in the corner, like always. Okay, so, oh, Christina says their skies were really clear in Fond du Lac. You're lucky. Lucky, lucky. Sharon says, Ohio, we had the total eclipse. So glad to see it. It was awesome. It looked really awesome. I remember there was one um, in, like, 2017, like, June or July, maybe. Um... So that's the last one that I saw. And that's really the only one I remember. I don't know when the one before that was. Um, so it's a bummer to miss it. But hi, Pat. Welcome. So, okay, let me show you quick um, what we have coming up on 
Friday at 4 p.m. Central. So I don't know what time that is for you, <laughs> but um, Friday at 4 p.m. Central, we're going to have the 2022 to 2024 in color retirement party. We're going to make five cards. The card kits are $45 and I do still have card kits left. We are going to use share a milkshake, but if you don't have share a milkshake, you could use brewed for you, ice cream swirl, latte love, simply sparkling. Sorry, that doesn't want to focus, but um, this is what the card kits look like. Okay, so they come in these nice envelopes. You get a full pack of the twine. We'll only use a little bit of it. You get a full pack of these in-color pearls. There's, they're really pretty. And then um, DSP, the in-color DSP, and everything to make five cards. And all the cards are the same layout. They're just in the different colors. So this is Starry Sky. Okay, and this is Glimmer Paper from my stash. We couldn't buy this. Uh, we could buy this in 2022. So this is old, but I had some left over. There's Parakeet Party. So as you can see, we just use a little bit of the ribbon to wrap around here. Okay, so um, you will have to like, oh, there's a dog here. <laughs> um, you will have to like stamp um, and die cut something for right here. You'll get like a little rectangle of the colored cardstock. And then, but um, you could do a mug or you could even do like So Refreshing has that cute lemonade um, pitcher. Okay, so Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis, Tahitian Tide, Parakeet Party, and Starry Sky. Okay, so that's the retirement party. Uh, it's $45, and um, I can ship that out to you. I do still have those left, so that'll be Friday. And this, I think, will be our first official class that um, is an actual class where you can get card kits that's not on a Tuesday. So who else is excited about that? I know I am. <laughs> so... Um, it's going to be fun. So, okay. Um, next week, I just wanted to show you these cards because Christine so graciously shows them on her channel. And I only make one of each of my, like one sample for my card classes. So I don't, um, once I ship them off to Christine, I don't have them for several weeks. So now I have them all back. So I thought I would show you again since we haven't looked at them for a while. <laughs> so this will be next week. This is the, um, monthly subscription class we're using beach day so that's um that's where we make nine cards so we make three of each of those and then um the week after that is normally the last day of the month is the fun fold class but um there's five tuesdays in april so we're gonna have five we're actually having six classes because of the class on Friday, but five Tuesday classes. So um, this is the first fun fold. This is um, $25 for these card kits, and I have plenty left. So it's using hot air balloon, and all this is die cut for you. Um, this one's going to be a fun slider. Okay, really cute, and it does open. And then this one I think you called a cascading something. I'm not sure waterfall card maybe okay so those are the fun fold cards and then this the second extra class I guess you could call it that's in um, April is the last Tuesday it's the 30th and um, it's three special cards for $25 we're gonna use kidding around but you really don't need anything in the kit so I'm trying to get the camera to focus you don't need anything um, in the bundle I mean so I will die cut a little kid from the DSP for you. I'll die cut the castle and everything so you don't need to have this stamp set and uh, we'll stamp this correctly um, in, in, in class. This one is dog on friendly uses that cute dog stamp set or any background stamp or any stamp that you could stamp as a background stamp like you can take multiple um, you can take a small stamp and stamp it a whole bunch of times. And then this uses maybe, I'm very surprised, but this is one of my favorite stamp sets. I can't believe it. Just looking at it, I was like, N no, pass. <laughs> but I love it. Once I pulled it out and started playing with it, I really love it. So this is Planted Paradise. It does not have dyes. That is the only downside. No dyes. So, but it's really cute. Okay, so that's um, card number three for the bonus class and then let's get into class cards for tonight okay so we are doing the let's craft card class we're going to use flower cart filled with happiness and lovely and sweet 
So I think I have three kits left for this class if you still want it. Uh, the card kits are $22 and that's mailed to you. My camera doesn't know what to focus on. <laughs> it's got too much to look at. So any other stamp sets that could be used if you don't have these would be Circle Sayings, any, any sentiment stamp set, and any floral stamp set. Okay, there's lots of options. So this is card number one for tonight. Okay, that's the lovely and sweet. This one is flower cart and uses bubble bath cardstock, which is finally back in stock. And then this one uses um, filled with happiness, which is retiring. The modern oval punch is not, but the filled with happiness is. And it uses a lot of celebration, the paper that's no longer available. So that's fun too. <laughs> okay, um, ink colors that we're gonna need tonight. Um, I may have missed some, but I think this is correct. We've got um, Moody Mauve, Petal Pink, Bubble Bath, Pecan Pie, Boho Blue, and Versamark. And you know what I saw? So, okay, you know on the back of your ink pads, we like pull off the pieces that we want, like that say the ink color name and put them on our ink pads. Well, apparently you're supposed to peel this whole piece off, not this sticker, but this piece, because it then allows the stamp sets, like there's a little notch in these and a little like foot on these. It allows them to nestle together really nicely, like more nicer than this. <laughs> so um, I didn't know that. I'll have to go through all of my stamp sets and do that. Kind of sounds like a lot of work, but I think I might do it. So just a little tip that I learned from another demonstrator, um, Julie DiMatteo, when I was watching her. So I'm sure I'm sure lots of you watch Julie. I, um, I've been watching Julie for years. So, <laughs> okay, well, let's get into class tonight. Um, most of the things are either more simple stamping or everything's die cut for you. So I don't think the cards are going to take too long today. Um, Milo's here. He's sleeping with a big snowman over there. So <laughs> I don't know how he's tired, but he is. So, <laughs> okay, let's pull out our card base that is crumb cake. And we're going to start with this one. So this is the flower cart card. Okay, so you're going to have a crumb cake base. You're going to have this ribbon, and it's white, and it is retired. I don't know what it's called, of course, but it is gone. I'm pretty sure it's gone. I don't think this is the white frayed ribbon. Maybe it is the white frayed ribbon. Either way, it'll be gone soon. It's not in the new catalog, okay? So you get a piece of that, and then you're gonna have lots of little pieces. So these little pearls, I couldn't find these when I was writing the PDF for class today. I couldn't find these. They're the little Moody Mauve foil. They're not really foil, they're glittery gems. They came in the um, autumn, autumn leaves suite, or whatever that was in the, in the mini. I did not see them in the new catalog. Um, you're going to have all these little pieces. There's actually three pieces to the wheels. So there's one wheel, one wheel that has like a little, maybe it's an axle. I don't know wheel terms. Okay. So one that has a little pokey outy thingy and then this little piece and I'll, I'll show you how to put it together and you might have the insides of your wheel. You can just toss those. Okay. You're going to have two little flower pots. Whoops. One is pecan pie. And one is bubble bath. You are going to have a little bubble bath canopy, okay, and the little pieces. There's three white pieces that decorate the canopy. Um, you're going to have two pieces of DSP that are die cut to look like flowers for your flower pots. This is for your crate or your flower cart itself. There's two pieces. One is like embossed when it die cuts. It's really cute. Okay, so it goes like this. This is like the little handle. You're gonna have a um, stylish shapes white circle and then two pieces of DSP from Flight and Airy. A bubble bath card mat for the front, a white inside, and then this is to stamp 
you need to stamp some sort of floral or something that can go in your cart. So we're gonna stamp the flowers that are in flower cart, but you could stamp whatever you wanted. Okay, so um, always step number one is to burnish your card base. And um, let's set that aside. Let's do our stamping. Okay, so um, I, let's pull out the stamp set. Gotta find it here. So this is the stamp set. It has a lot of cute stamps in it. I'm gonna do have a lovely day. Hi, Joanne. Christina says I have the crate set from the fall. I'm hoping the flowers in there will work with the flower card. Oh, that's a great idea, Christina. I'm sure they will. That's rustic crate. I have it right here. Let's look. Oh, they totally will fit. Yes. You could even do these. Those would fit. You could cut them. You know, you'd have to trim them, but those, those would fit. Those might be a little big, but they might fit. Yep. There you go. So if you have rustic crate, you could use that too. Um, that was from the fall mini catalog and um, it carried over, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's stamp. I'm going to stamp Have a Lovely Day in Bubble Bath. I didn't get anything ready today. Nothing. Okay, so have a lovely day. <clears throat> I'm going to do that right in the center. <clears throat> have a lovely day. And now Bubble Bath is quite, <clears throat> quite light. <clears throat> it's quite, <coughs> I have a tickle in my throat, of course. So just make sure you ink up well, okay, since it's a light little color. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little. Okay, have a lovely day. And then the inside, I think I've got some bubble bath in too. Oh, I do. Oh, but that's quite a, the inside is a little involved. Let's pull out everything we need for the inside. So I don't need have a lovely day anymore, but the inside I have this little flower pot and the flowers, the little flowers, which are, there's two, there's this one and this one, they're layering. And I have Happy Mother's Day and I have the little walkway path. So I'll show you what I have. So the walkway, this little path, the layering flowers, and uh, Happy Mother's Day. And this sign is really cute too, it has a die. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out all of my inks now. I will need bubble bath. First, I'm going to do pecan pie, and in pecan pie, I am going to stamp the little um, flower vase, not flower vase, flower pot, right down here. Okay, now the flowers, I lined them up pretty good on the sample, but I think... This one goes first. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on that. I don't know if it will. It's, um, can you tell which one that is? <laughs> it's the one that has, like, less photopolymer that stamps on it. I believe that that's the background, like the leaves. So we're going to stamp that um, in boho blue. But we're going to do boho blue second generation. So that's, like, the, the leaves, I think. So we're gonna do second generation. So I'm just going to stamp off once and then stamp this right on top of the flower pot. Okay. And then the other flower that we put on is gonna be what grows out of the pot, the flowers that grow out of the pot. And I'm gonna do that in first strength boho blue which I'll have to say that I sort of overlooked boho blue until recently, um, but I'm really liking it. Isn't it pretty? Okay, then we need the little um, path, 
they're, they're like cute little rocks, like little stepping stones. Those are in bubble bath. And those are gonna be walking up to the pot. Okay, and then right above that, I will do Happy Mother's Day in Boho Blue. So if you don't like to stamp anywhere but the center of your cards, you can certainly stamp in the center. You could stamp Happy Mother's Day in the center. Um, but I'm really liking stamping in non-traditional spaces. Okay, so that's the inside. Isn't that cute? Different, right? And I think that's all of our stamping. Oh no, we got to stamp our um, big flowers in Boho Blue. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do first and second generation with these larger flowers. So like this is gonna be second generation Boho Blue and this will be first generation. And then you can either fussy cut or die cut it out. Whoa. So I will do the detail layer, not the detail layer, the background layer, like the leaves in second generation. So I inked up and stamped off. And then I will stamp the flowers in first generation or first strength. And I'm gonna try to line them up. I'm not too concerned about it being perfect. Christina says she likes stamping in different areas on the inside too. <laughs> it's fun, right? It's different. It's unexpected when you open up a card. Okay, so it has these flowers have a little die. You could fussy cut them. And die cut those out really quick. All right. There we go. They're so cute. Okay, let's assemble our flower cart. Uh, it looks more complicated than it is, I promise. Let me get out my silicone mat and... Um, okay, I'm going to tell you that these little pieces, I cut them off because they're so um, flimsy. I, I don't... I, I don't want to say flimsy, but flimsy. I couldn't get them to sit nicely and like glue nicely to the card. So I'm going to take my snips and trim them off. Okay. I don't know that if you didn't know that they were supposed to be there, I think it would just look, it just looks like they're not even, like it just came like that. <laughs> okay. If you want to, if you want to fussy with them, you can. That's too fussy for me. <laughs> like, I'm I'm extra, but that's too extra for me. Okay, let's do our box. Okay, so this is our little box. This is the base, our flower box. And this is how it goes, but we want our flowers. I can't pick them up. There we go. We want our flowers to be in here. Um, kind of like that. Okay. What type of tape do you use to hold your dies down? Oh, and I just ran out of it up here. Um, I can show you. If I can find it. Here it is, right here. I use post-it tape, and I like the one inch. So this is how it comes. I rip this off. This is a brand new roll. Okay, so I like the one inch. And um, I leave this, um, like I just stick it to my die cut machine and then use it till it stops being sticky. So, oh, Christina, you're funny. Yeah, I, I can't glue those little sticks down or whatever they are. <laughs> um, I've tried a lot of different repositionable tapes um, you know, I've got this pink tape. 
I've got pink tape. This works okay. Um, mint. Mint tape works pretty good too. I'm just out at the moment. No, I'm not out. I have a tape dispenser. Here it is. Mint tape works really well too. You can buy these cute little dispensers. So they're fun. My go-to is post-it tape. I tend to try lots of different things and then I go back to my favorites, my, my tried and true. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on here down at the bottom or toward the bottom. And, oh, hi, Hildy, welcome. Okay, we'll put this on. And we're not gonna put glue toward the top because we wanna be able to slip our flowers in there. Okay, and we're gonna slip our flowers in after we've put the rest of the crate together. So if you push out all your little, this is cut from the rose gold specialty paper and I'm not sure if it's current, but um, I love it, it's one of my favorites. And I have a little bit of a little bit of it still, so I'm gonna use it, right? <laughs> Why not? Okay, so this is like the little stand to the crate. It goes like right there, and then um, this wheel with the little doohickey. I'm gonna call it a thingy because that's. That's what we call it. If Christina Fullen was here, she would, she always is live when we don't know what things are called. <laughs> it may be called an axle. I don't really know. Okay, that's gonna go under this wheel, like this, and then this wheel will go right here. Okay, so that's how we're gonna glue it together. Um, hold on, I gotta get all these out of the way. That's how we're gonna glue it together. You can use glue dots, you could use liquid glue, you could use a combination of both. I think I'm gonna put a little piece of liquid, or a little drop of liquid glue right there. And I'm gonna stick this wheel onto it. Okay. And I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Nope, that might not dry. This is foil, so maybe we should use glue dots. Let's use glue dots or tear and tape. Let's be smart, right? <laughs> okay, let's make a little sandwich on the back. I'm gonna, yes, Trish says yes, it's the axle. <laughs> I'm gonna take this, so the little handle here is off to the left. I'm gonna put tear and tape on the back right here. And that's gonna hold this little, I, I don't know, the little stand, like the little, it reminds me of like a wheelbarrow. This little piece right here. These three pieces are actually the top. Okay, so it goes like that. Okay, and we're gonna make a sandwich. There. All right, now we gotta put the wheels on. And one wheel goes behind and one goes in the front. So what I'm going to do is simply position the wheels where I like them. And then I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape over the back to hold them. Okay. So let's get this back wheel in the back and the front wheel in the front. That looks pretty good. I did it a little crooked. That's all right, my cart will just be wobbly. You guys ever get like those wobbly carts at Target? Sometimes I just keep the wobbly cart. I just keep it all the way through Target and <laughs> get really annoyed at the wobbly cart. <laughs> my, my cart is a little wobbly. Okay, then in there, in here, we need our little flowers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck our flowers in on the left and in on the right. And this little piece is going to be hanging out, push it as far as it goes. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cover the seam of the pecan pie and the white with dimensionals to hold it together. You could accomplish this with tear and tape also if you wanted. 
okay? All right, so there's our little flower cart. We'll add this next, okay? We actually add it on the card after, um, after it's put together. Okay, let's put together our little flower pots. You could use glue dots or tear and tape here, whatever your preference, or our liquid glue. I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. And then these little flowers that I die cut from Flower DSP for you will go on the top. I tried to make this card so that you didn't need to have the stamp set because I know not everyone has the stamp set and I don't want you to have to buy stamp sets that you don't need just to make a card. Yes, it's very cute how it goes together. So I tried to die cut everything for you. So you, um, rather than like stamping and die cutting these little flowers, I die cut them from the DSP. Okay, now uh, it's hard to tell on camera, but there are these little like embossed or debossed lines on the canopy. And that's where these little white pieces go. There's three little white pieces in your kit. And um, you put them, you just line them up on that, on the debossed area. And debossed, like the opposite of embossed, it's slightly raised. Shows you exactly where they need to go. Okay. There. And then that will get dimensionals. Uh, the little flower pots get dimensionals. Our It's a Lovely Day sentiment gets dimensionals. Okay, I think that's it for little gluing and assembly. So we can set those aside and let's glue our card base. Okay, so... Um, on your bubble bath um, mat, we're going to glue this paper on the top and this paper on the bottom. And we're going to have an about an eighth of an inch around um, that the bubble bath is going to peek out on. Okay, so don't worry too much about the papers lining up with each other in the center. We want our bubble bath to be equal around the sides. Okay, so make sure you're doing the birds in the right direction. You don't want upside down little birdies. And then don't, don't worry about if it overlaps or doesn't match up with the bird paper. We want this to be lined up at the bottom and the left and the right. Okay. All right, now we are going to cover this seam with our ribbon. Now we're gonna use our tear and tape again and we're gonna make another sandwich. So we're gonna have two pieces waiting and we're gonna flip over our cardstock and put tear and tape right where that seam is on both sides. And then we'll push the ribbon into that from the front. I think this might be the frayed ribbon, only because the ends are fraying. <laughs> it might be the frayed ribbon. Either way, it's retiring, so if you like it, get it. It's got like a really cute, I don't know if herringbone is the right name for the pattern, but it has a really cute pattern on it. I don't know that there is a white, well, there is a white ribbon in the new catalog. It's white and pink. It's like a combo pack. Yeah. Um, okay, let's glue the inside and the card mat down. Okay. There we 
there's our inside. And the front. And this one's got a nice tight margin on it. Okay. And then we're going to add our little wagon. Not wagon. Why do I want to call it a wagon? It's because there's a wagon um, set in the... I think it's an online exclusive. What is it called? Huh. Happy something. The, the ribbon here is going to not only cover the seam between the two DSPs, but it's going to act as like a grounding piece for our little flower cart. So our little flower cart will go right here on the left. Okay. We're going to do our flower pots next to it on the right. And they're going to kind of overlap each other. So one here. Oh, that's a little low. Oops. There. And one here. Okay. Then we got to add our little canopy. And um, this is where, if you want to, if you want to mess around with the um, little strings, you certainly can. I don't think you need to. <laughs> I think it looks perfectly fine just like that without those little support legs or whatever they are. Okay, then we'll add our sentiment circle up in the right. Have a lovely day. And our little, these aren't pearls. What were they called? Adhesive backed somethings. They're moody mauve. Whoops. A big and a little. And a little up at the top. Okay. And that is card number one. Okay. So you really don't need this stamp set to make this card. You just need something to put in your flower card. But it could be anything. I mean, you could put fruit in there. You could put like if you have Simply Sparkling, there's a whole bunch of fruit in there. Or if you have some greenery, you can put some greenery in there. Or Ice Cream Swirl, there's some fruit in there. I'm just looking at the stamp sets that I've got pulled out here. Tons of stuff that you could put in there. And then just a sentiment, right? So, thanks Hildy. This paper is so pretty. Adhesive back dots. Yeah, that sounds right, Trish. These, I think, were adhesive back dots. They came in crumb cake, olive, old olive, and moody moth. I'm pretty sure. All right. Card number one. Check. Let's do... Um, let's do lovely and sweet next. So this is lovely and sweet. We're going to do some heat embossing. And it comes with that faux leather trim. Everything except for the stamp and die set on this one is retiring. Okay. Um, I have a lot of stamps out. Let's see if I can move them out of the way. Okay, so this one has a pecan pie base and a piece of um, the faux leather trim. It's really pretty. It, it's kind of hard to work with, but it's got like a gold goldness to it okay um, you're gonna have a piece of white this is for stamping and heat embossing you're gonna have three of the cork rounds these were still available when I looked earlier today but they are retiring you'll have some gold and some pecan pie this is for the sentiment this gold is retired it's from Stampin' Up from about I don't know I want to say six years ago <laughs> And I have had it in my stash for forever, and it's my favorite gold paper, and I will be very sad when I am out of it. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you. Okay, so that's for your sentiment. This is from Simply Adored, which I'm trying to remember. Was it a celebration paper or not? Not from Simply Adored. Was it Simply Adored? No, that's the... Yeah, maybe it was. I think it was celebration paper. This is your white card front mat, and it is... Uh, dry embossed with a softly sophisticated embossing folder, which 
was a celebration item also gone it's a very subtle embossing folder and then your white inside so this card is um, landscape style okay so always burnish and we can do our stamping first let's do the only stamping um with regular ink that's in the whole card which is this just sending a little bit of love your way so if you don't have this stamp set all you need is a sentiment and that's going to be in pecan pie and it's going to be on the inside of the card i'm going to do it at the bottom right again i'm feeling adventurous <laughs> lately and want to stamp not in the center just sending a little bit of love your way. Okay. Um, I'm working diligently this week to get May cards designed for you guys. So hopefully I can do a showcase. I don't know. I'm hoping by the end of next week I can do the May showcase. Uh, there will be five classes in May. And the one I'm most excited about is the in color kickoff party. So we're going to use hot air balloon and the five new in colors. So I actually just got a box today. From Stampin' Up! So I have to go through it. Okay, on this white piece that's not your inside mat, we're gonna do um, embossing, heat embossing. So powder up with whatever powder tool you like to use. If you want to use a stamp positioner, you can. I think I'm going to um, wing it. It is a red rubber clean stamp, so I think it's gonna stamp nicely. And embossing sorry that was probably really loud and then we're gonna um, heat emboss this with gold you could also just stamp it in black and either fussy cut or die cut it out or you could stamp it in pecan pie too okay so I'm gonna ink that up really well put it here give it a good push Hopefully, hopefully that'll work. Let it marinate. <laughs> and then I'm going to get out my gold. So. All right. Okay, I think that's stamped well. I guess we'll find out, huh? Little by little, I made a bigger container for gold. So um, our embossing powder is out until I've heard fall. Um, something with the supplier. Maybe they change supply suppliers and then something, something about how they just can't get it until fall. That looks pretty good, yeah? All right, let's heat emboss it. All right, I'm going to melt it. It might be loud. I never know if it's going to mute me or not. So. For those of you who might be new to heat embossing, um, if you are trying to heat emboss and you're not getting very good results, it may be because you aren't using an anti-static powder on your paper first. And in my experience, there is no such thing as too much anti-static powder. So don't be afraid to use it. And then um, you can brush off any flecks that you don't want. Like if you get extra embossing powder on the paper, you can brush off those flecks with like a dry paintbrush. 
before you melt the powder. And then you use your heat tool and you want to keep it moving across your paper. And then you know that your embossing powder is melted when it changes texture. It gets really shiny. The one thing that I am sad that this dye, when you die cut it out, it doesn't die cut the cute little like descriptor of what it's called. And I wish it did. It's just cute. <laughs> okay. So there's that. And if you still have the DSP, which is surprisingly carrying over to the new catalog, um, you could die cut this image from the DSP. It is in the DSP in a foil. Which I'll have to say I was very surprised to see. Um, it is not often that, uh, as, as far as I know, DSP has never carried over from one catalog to the next. So maybe someone who has been around longer than me could confirm that, but I have never seen that. There's like four or five DSPs that are carrying over. So, oh, I don't know that it needs another one. <laughs> Oh, and you know what? I forgot we have to heat emboss our sentiment. What did I use? I said, life is better with you. Where did I get that from? Charming sentiments, maybe? Oh, I wrote it down, but, you know, maybe happy labels? Happy labels, that's where it is. Life is better than you. So any lawn sentiment... You could do congratulations, whatever lawn sentiment that you like. Life is better with you. Right there. Sharon says, I've heard that about the DSP. Yeah, there's a couple. The lavender, the painted lavender is carrying over and um, um, Why can't I think of the names now? Painted Lavender is carrying over. Country, country, um, something. All right, this I'm going to stamp more on the right-hand side. Life is better with you. The blue country paper is carrying over. Um, the Lovely and Sweet, which is not what it's called, but that paper. <laughs> And one more, I think. There we go. Okay. melt that. Let's see. I need to hold it with something. All right. There we go. Okay, there might be a little bit of extra anti-static powder on here. That's fine. We're going to let it set for a second, and then we can either wipe it away with your finger or a cloth. Okay, so while we just let that set for a minute, let's work on our card base. Um, oh, you know what? I cut mine in this orientation. I wonder if yours is cut in this orientation, too. Hmm. All right, well, if you have the card kit, this was the way I was going to do it. I wonder if I cut your paper in this orientation too. Well, let's make the card this way. That way, in case I did, you can make it this way. Let's stamp the sentiment then. Instead of like that, let's stamp it like this because I wonder if I cut yours that way. Here it is. 
just sending a bit of love your way. And then we can decide at the end which one we like better, huh? Crafting on the fly here. So I had this at the top of the other one. So I think I'll do it at the bottom. Okay, so let's put, let's glue some stuff down. Let's glue the inside of our card, which is now, I'm gonna glue it vertical. I'm going to glue this piece onto here. This is gonna go inside our card, which is now, turned the other way. Okay, this is going to go on the card front. Okay. All right, um, this is dry. I'm gonna use tear and tape on this because we're adhering to foil. So I'm gonna put tear and tape on the back of the pecan pie piece and put that, it's gonna get butted up to the right, the right side of the gold foil, right in the center though. So like on this side, but in the center. Okay, like that. Okay. Now let's see. We're gonna have to do some rearranging. Maybe we do something like that. Let's do that. All right. So if you have the vertical, the landscape one, this is how I did it. But if I accidentally gave you the wrong size DSP, you can do it the way I'm doing it. It'll still be just as pretty. That's gonna go down here. Let's peel these off. Gonna go here. Okay. Now this is our twine, and I took it and I folded it in half. Okay, so it's it's folded in half. It's got a loop on one end. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna make a knot. So I've got both of the pieces. Okay. I've got both of the pieces here. If it'll focus, there we go. And I'm gonna make a knot. right in the center there. Okay, and then all you have to do is trim, oh, where'd my scissors go? I don't know, here they are. <laughs> Just trim that, and there you go. There's your knot. Now, um, this is gonna go on with a glue dot, but um, you might want to put the glue dot onto the paper instead of, like normally when I have a bow, I put the bow onto the glue dot. I think I'm going to take the glue dot off the this backing paper and put it here just to help myself out. And I might do two pieces since this leather trim is, I don't want to say difficult, but you know, <laughs> it's not the easiest. Okay, I'll push that there and Trim these tails up a little bit. Okay, and then we'll put in, here's where I put the embellishments if you have the landscape version. And then let's look about, let's decide where to put the embellishments for the portrait version.
I like one there, a big one there, and a little one there. And let's tuck a big one over here. Okay. All right. So whichever version you have, here's portrait finished, pretty. or landscape. <laughs> okay. Equally pretty. It's hard not to make a pretty card with this um, stamp, in my opinion. All right, that's card number two already, guys. All right, card number three is a fun fold. And this does have a bow that fell off. <laughs> the bow is made out of the Moody Mauve ribbon that's retiring. It's, um, let's see. I've got it here. It's this, this ribbon, textured ribbon. I think it's 3 eighths inch. Yes, 3 eighths inch textured ribbon. And it comes in all the in colors from last year. So, okay, so this one's a fun fold because it has this front little piece and then this little regular fold, okay? So I don't know what you call it. <laughs> we need Angelique here to tell us what they're called, what the fun folds are called. So this uses the Modern Oval Punch, which is, I think it's out of stock. Um, it is carrying over, but the stamp sets that go with it are not carrying over. So um, pull out your Moody Mauve card base, and you're going to have an oval punched out in very vanilla. You're going to have two pieces of DSP of the same kind cut like this. One's one inch and one is two and a half inches, I think you will have this piece of DSP. And I'm trying to think what this was called. Um, I put it in the PDF today, but the name of it is escaping me. You'll have a Moody Mauve. Now this is the card front mat for the mini card. This little card on the front is the mini card. So set that aside. And then you're gonna have this mini card base in Moody Mauve with, a, with an inside, okay? So that will be the inside to that one. The little pearls that we have are carrying over. These are the foil, foil something, glitter, foil, <laughs> pretty pink, not pretty pink, petal pink and um, pretty peacock is what they come in. So you'll have three in pretty, in petal pink. You'll have a petal pink um, card front for the front and a very vanilla for the inside. Okay, so um, this one uses filled with happiness. And we're going to use this stamp here. You could use any of them. And we use this little guy too. Okay, so let's get our stamping underway. Always need to burnish and set aside. Okay. Um, let's stamp the inside. So pull out your very vanilla inside mat. And that is going to be, I just want to hug you. Ooh, I don't have what stamp set that's from either. What did I use for that one? Did I use happy labels again? I did. I just want to hug you. So you need any sentiment. I just want to hug you. Trish says, I got the DSP cut to make a vertical card, but I think if I just cut a new horizontal card base, I would like it better. Put DSP on left side. Oh, yes, Trish, that's a good idea. So Trish is going to take and put the vanilla bean figure. So Trish is going to um, take this piece of DSP and put it right here. She's going to put it here. And then put this more central. That, that would be pretty, too. Good idea, Trish. Okay, so three options. Okay. All right. Um, let me get a block out. So this is going to be Moody Mauve. I just want to hug you. Okay. Moody Mauve, Moody Mauve. We need Moody Mauve and Petal Pink for this one. And this stamp, I don't know if it's because my ink pad is really juicy, but this stamp stamps really well. Okay, so that's going to go bottom left or center. You can certainly put it in the center. OK, 
Okay. Whoops. And then um, on the inside mat for the little card, we're going to stamp a teeny weensy little flower in petal pink. It's this little flower and it's really cute and delicate. And that's going to be petal pink. And it's going to be in the bottom left. I think that's it for petal pink. Okay, it's going to follow the little curve of the card. Okay, so let's close Moody Mauve for a minute and let's get some gluing done just so that we can get um, this, this mat to the inside and this mat to the inside so that we don't mix them up. Okay, so let's glue these insides. Okay. All right, that inside, and then this inside, and the little flower goes on the bottom left there. Okay. All right, so we still have two separate cards for now. Oh, we gotta burnish that fold. Okay, we still have two separate cards for now. We haven't put them together in one. Um, we can put our petal pink mat onto our Moody Mauve. Okay, so let's do that. Get that in there. Pretty, pretty. Okay, um, these are going to go on here. I suppose we could glue these down too. So the larger two inch one goes on the right and the smaller, um, I think that's one inch, goes on the left. And we're not gonna worry about how they look on the inside of the card. We only care about how they look toward the edges. So this little one, we line up with the top, the bottom, and the left. And this bigger one we line up with the bottom, the top, and the right. Okay. Now don't worry about the center. We're going to cover the center with this. Okay. We're just going to add it in a little bit here after we stamp on our other piece. Okay. I'm going to pull out this stamp right here. And um, these stamps are unique because mm, um, I'm going to, I need a bigger black. I got to peel this one off. <laughs> I only have one of this size black, e, an E black. Apparently I need another one. Okay, so this is unique, these stamps, because this, the modern oval punch only punches out this part, which is the center. It's not this outside font. And it does that with this one too, with this image. This image, it only stamps the inside. Um, but these two bigger ones, it does not stamp. It does not punch out that piece. So what we are going to do is we are going to take this piece of DSP and we are going to stamp in the center or as much in the center as possible with Moody Mauve. We care mostly about the happy birthday and the may, your, may it be filled with happiness and not the center because we're going to stamp the center again on this piece. Okay, um, So don't worry so much about what the center looks like. We worry, we're going to worry about what the outside on this piece anyway. <laughs> so this is Happy birthday. May your day be filled with happiness. Okay, and that is going to go in the center. This is, I think, my favorite um, DSP. It was another DSP that I wasn't expecting to like. And I really liked it. 
Okay. Now we need to stamp and now we're going to ignore the outside happy birthday that we were focusing on. We're going to ignore that and we need a piece of scratch paper. We're going to ignore the outside and we're going to stamp that inside on the punch. Now, if you wanted to stamp this on a piece of vanilla and um, then use your own punch, that might be easiest. It is hard to see. But if you don't have the punch, just line it up as best you can. It does help that they're photopolymer. <laughs> So mine is slightly crooked, but I'll, I'll, I'll use it. I'll go with it. All right, we are going to color these ever so gently with our blends. Now the paper and the ink will bleed if we get them too wet. So we're just going to use a little bit of ink. We're going to use Petal Pink Dark and Moody Mauve Dark and Light. So I'm going to take my Petal Pink Dark and color in all of the leaves. Okay, these leaves. I left the berries blank and then the leaves down here. Just a little bit of co a color. I'm trying not to get the paper wet at all because um, the ink will bleed. Okay, the little underbelly of the bird is petal pink and these his feathers back here our petal pink. Okay. So there's petal pink on him. I really didn't stamp that the greatest. And then Moody Mauve, I'm going to do a little line of dark along his, the bottom of his body here. Along his wing here. And his wing here. <clears throat> and then some light. Okay, so there's our cute little birdie. Really easy to color. Okay, and he is going to be popped up on dimensionals. Or she. I suppose it's a pink bird. It's probably a she, huh? <laughs> And we're going to line that up in the center over the bird that's stamped. Okay, just like that. Okay, that will get glued to this vanilla mat. And then this vanilla mat will get glued to the front of the mini card. All right, now we have our mini card made right here, which is cute on its own, <laughs> and our main card base right here. And we're going to cover our little seam up right here. So it's the exact same height. We're gonna put glue on the back of our mini card. Line it up where we would like it on the big card. And press down and I would give it a minute to adhere okay we need our little pearls I'm gonna do a big pearl a little pearl oh gosh and then I'm going to do this other little pearl right off the side. Okay, thanks, Hildy. Okay, now we need a bow, and I'm going to do a double bow. Let me get my bow maker. I'm going to do a double bow. I think I'm going to do this configuration. So first peg and third peg. And when I do a double bow... I wrap it like this 
and I wrap it again. So that's the doubleness. And I have a video out there um, if you need to know how to use the bow maker. It's not very long and you can pause it as needed to um, tie your bow or to learn how to tie your bows. So I don't think I would tie bows without a bow maker, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know what I did before. I just didn't do bows, I guess. Okay, so there's my cute little double bow. And one thing I like to do, um, obviously they'll get flat in the mail again, but I like to take my bows and put a thin pen through the loops and help fluff the bow. It just looks so much better when it's been fluffed. So here we go, I'll get it in here. Okay. All right, and that's gonna go right here. So I'm gonna push that into a glue dot. Oh, good, Trish. I'm glad you found it helpful. <laughs> it's, um, whoops, this one doesn't look so nice. It's just something, it's one of those tools that I feel like if you don't know about them, then you don't know what you're missing, right? It's like a stamp positioner. Like, you don't know how great they are until you have them. <laughs> okay. All right. So there's our cute little, I don't know what you call this. A double card. Yes, Hildy, a double card. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I really love Moody Mauve, and I think it's this, DF this DSP that does it for me. I, I love stripes, the vertical stripes. I love the, the DSP. Okay, so that's card number three, you guys. So tell me which one you like the best. I'll pull them all back. Okay, so here's card one. And then remember, card two had a few variations. <laughs> um, depending on how your DSP was cut, you either have a landscape card or you have a portrait card. Okay, both are pretty. So you have one of those two. <laughs> okay, and so that's card number two. And then this one was card number one, the flower cart. Okay, so let me know which one your favorite is. I think my favorite is probably this one. Probably that one. All right. All right. Well, these classes tend to go quickly. I don't know why. You'd think they'd take longer because they have three cards to make with three different stamp sets, but they don't. <laughs> uh, the bundle classes usually go the longest, so it's kind of funny. Christina says number three is her favorite with the Moody Mauve. Yes. Sharon. Whoop. Where'd your comment go? I think my favorite is the flower cart. It makes me think of warm spring weather. Yes, <laughs> we need some warm spring weather. It's supposed to be really nice here. Um, it's supposed to be um, 70 or 72, I think, on Saturday. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be great. Although I'm in short sleeves today. Not like all day, but <laughs> short sleeves for crafting. So it's, so Wisconsin in April, we never really know. It can snow or it can be 80. We, we just never really know what to expect. Or I guess we have to expect the unexpected. <laughs> okay, uh, let me get Milo here. I'll flip the camera and I'll bring Milo over. He's totally passed out, like gone to the world. <laughs> He'll wake up as soon as I shake his little treat bin though. Milo Bear. Hi. How's your nap? Do you want snacks? All right. I think he wants snacks. <laughs> you want snacks, buddy? All right. I'm going to tilt you down. Hi. How was your nap? How was your nap? Did you have a good nap? Did you have a good nap? Can you sit? Oh, good boy. Can you shake? Oh, oh, you're gonna fall down. <laughs> Good bear. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed. I missed. 
Oh, did I drop it? Okay, sit down. I'm sorry. Oh, oh you're moving the whole cart. <laughs> oh, good boy. Who's a good boy? You want the last ones that are in here? Okay, there's just a few left. There you go. Oh, good boy, Milo. <laughs> good boy, Milo. All right, that's it. We finished a whole bag of treats, guys. <laughs> oh, is that good, baby? Is that good, Milo? Say hi. Hi, Milo. Hi, Milo. All right. Let's see back to my comments. All right, Pat says, love all three cards, but the third is my favorite. I love Moody Mauve. Yes, I didn't think I was going to love Moody Mauve, but it's very pretty. Trish says, I like card number two more than I thought I would. I'll have to practice my embossing when I make it, though. Yes, maybe practice on a scrap piece. Um, if you have a stamp positioner, that will definitely help because you can... You, you, you can stamp multiple times and make sure you have good ink coverage. So maybe give that a try. Cheryl says, all of them are pretty, but I pick number one. Yes, num number one is fun. I really like that flower card stamp set. I know a lot of people were like, eh, I don't need that one. <laughs> but I, I really liked it. It, mu it must have sold well because it's going to carry over. So Hildy, oh, Sher Cheryl says, all of them are pretty, but I pick number one. Maybe I already read that. Sorry. Hildy says, has he ever chewed on one of your stamps? Oh, no, Hildy. No, he's never chewed on the stamp. He's eaten pretty much everything that you can eat, though. Um, he's pretty good now that he's 11. But back when he was, like, seven and under, <laughs> he would eat everything. He particularly liked Legos, the kids' Legos. Loved Legos. And did anybody have any of those little people? They're, like, Fisher-Price little people. They're, like, little plastic people, like, hard-molded plastic he loved little people. He loved to chew off their arms. You know, they all were like stuck like this <laughs> and he'd chew off their arm or like if they had a ponytail, he'd chew off the ponytail. Uh, one time he chewed up the entire school bus for little people. Um, he's eaten stuffed animals that have little like beans in them, like bean bag type things. And I come home and I find the beans everywhere. Um, I should find a picture. It wasn't even that long ago, like three years ago for Christmas. We made Christmas cookies and I made the mistake of leaving like a bag of powdered sugar on the counter when I walked away for all of one minute. And I came back and the entire kitchen and the living room carpet and Milo was covered in powdered sugar. I'll, I'll find the photo and I will post it on Facebook because he looked like a white dog. Like I was, oh my God. So no, he's never chewed a stamp but I would not put it past him. <laughs> Maybe he just has never gotten one before. <laughs> That's why he hasn't chewed a stamp. So, but he's eaten everything else under the sun and he's gone to the vet more times than I can count for eating things. Oh, he used to um, like steal a popsicle from the kids when they were eating it. So then he'd eat the popsicle stick and um, they can't eat that. So he's been to the vet twice for eating popsicle sticks um, he's been to the vet. Oh, one time he ate a two and a half pound bag of raw chicken. Mm -hmm. Bag and all. Like thick plastic bag. He ate all of that. That was a couple night. I think a two night stay in the vet. Yeah. I think he somehow got on the kitchen counter and into the kitchen sink to get the chicken that I had thawing. I don't know how he did it. There is no other way he could have gotten that bag of chicken out of the sink. So I think he made it on the counter somehow. I don't know. I wasn't home, but what else has he eaten? He ate a bag from inside a turkey. Uh, like they have those big, huge staples holding them together. Like when you pull it, the stuff out of the turkey, he ate that whole bit, like that whole bag and that huge staple in it. I, I, he's eaten so much stuff. You guys. Now he just gets it and like chews it. He doesn't actually eat it. He just like rips the stuff apart to play with. So I don't know. I'm sure those of you who have labs or any other dogs that like to chew have similar stories, right? I mean, they get into everything. They're like perpetual puppies. <laughs> they never age. <laughs> so, yeah, he's great. <laughs> now he's pretty good. He just rips apart stuffed animals. He's laying down. He's moved on to, um, he's moved on to this. Yeah. One of the kids got this for their birthday. I think, like, a stuffed animal comes in it. I don't even know. And it has, like, a unicorn horn on it. Well, he's decided this is his. So he pulled it out of the garbage, like, the present gift garbage, and now he's playing with it. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff he does now. It's not 
it's not as bad as um, what it used to be when he was really little. So, okay, guys, it's only 921. We were really quick tonight. Um, it was fun, even though we had some hiccups thrown in there. I hope you still had fun, too. I'm really excited for Friday to do the in-color retirement class with Shara Milkshake. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be Friday. It's going to be weird, right? So I'm really excited for that. Again, let me know if you want card kits for that. If you're Even if you're watching this on replay, I still have card kits for that class. So they're $45, and I'll mail them, um, I'll mail them to you. As of now, they, won't, they probably won't get to you by Friday. But um, you could watch the replay and make the cards later. So, okay, guys, we'll have a great Wednesday tomorrow, right? I don't even know what day of the week it is. Have a great Wednesday tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for spending your Tuesday night with me. I hope you have a great night, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Milo says bye, too. <laughs> see you. Thank you. Take care.